Good morning. Welcome to Victory Baptist Church this morning. Let's all get a songbook, stand and turn to page 281. Page 281. Well, it is a joy to be in the Lord's house. Certainly good to see all of you here this morning. And we welcome each one of you to the Victory Baptist Church. Welcome those who are listening by way of radio, those who are watching by Facebook. We certainly appreciate you tuning in this morning. And as we go to the Lord in prayer, let's do pray for the service. Pray that God will have his will, his way here this morning. Amen. And I hope you've had a good week this past week. And uh, looking forward to what God's going to do for us this morning. And uh, then praying that God will help us in the week to come. Uh, that we will just serve him. Amen. And our lives will honor him. And uh, let's pray this morning, especially for those that are lost, that God would deal with their hearts. Also, we ask, if you will, to continue to pray for our school here at Victory, our troops and our missionaries. And let's pray for all the families of our church. Uh, especially those who are not able to get out and about, that God will help them and God will meet the needs there uh, in their lives. Amen. Also, let's uh, continue to remember Gaynell Setliff, Kelsey Webb, Angie Whitley, uh, Kinley Edwards, Patsy Franklin, James and Beulah Edwards, Stephanie Stafford, Darlene Hanford, Alton Hanford, Jacqueline Del Cid, uh, Rodney Hagwood, Lisa Perkinson, Rebecca Francis, John and Wanda Newcomb, Dick Tony. Also remember Brooke Parnell this morning. She's not feeling well. And also Brother Jesse Craigle. Many of you remember Brother Jesse. He's in the hospital uh, due to uh, pneumonia from having the uh, COVID. So remember him in prayer. And Brother Ricky Atkinson's daddy has also uh, got the virus. So let's remember them this morning. Also Donald and Shirley Hyatt. Appreciate you praying for my uh, brother's father-in-law, he had surgery a week ago Monday, and uh, he just got out of the hospital on Friday, and certainly appreciate you praying, had a little bit of a complication, uh, but uh, see, he got home, amen, that's what they were praying, and so just pray that God will touch him as he heals, and God will meet the need there. Also, Nancy Capps, Francis Pendergrass, Evan and Jan Janice Mitchell, Melissa Woodard, Ricky Gleason, Robert Tamika Myers, H.G. Davis, Derek Francis, Mike Thompson, Valerie Hendrick, Pat England, Joanne Dominic, Lawrence and Janice Lanier, uh, Katie Hagwood, Walter Hilliard, Connie Banks, and Nancy Askew. Also good to see Mark and Patty and Chris and Vicki back this morning, and uh, glad to see them. Amen. Also, let's continue to pray for Judy and Sam Pendergrass, John Matthews, uh, Pat Matthews and Bill Shoemaker praying for them today. Amen. Pray that God will have his will and his way and everything that's said and done here this morning. And uh, just so good to see all of you. Amen. And we're 12 days away from Christmas. And I know some folks is probably getting excited about that. But uh, it's good to be in the Lord's house. Amen. And so let's go to the Lord in prayer and just believe God today uh, for the service 
and that souls will be saved. God will stir and revive our hearts, and the Lord will help us this morning. Amen. And so let's pray and just believe the Lord today. Remember our missionaries. We had one of our missionaries, Brother Keith Price in Romania. He got real sick with the virus, and, uh, and at the first of the week, uh, they called the doctor, and the doc told him, said, you'll have to call the ambulance uh, to get him to come out and check him. And when they called uh, the ambulance, they said it'll take three days for him to get out there. And uh, I tell you, you want to be thankful you live in America. Amen. When it comes to health care and all that goes on, we, we're a blessed nation. You get to think about them, but thank God Brother Keith's doing better. They, I saw this morning on Facebook his wife put an update and uh, said he was his stats were back to normal and his, health, his uh, oxygen levels were back to normal, so we're thankful for that. Just continue to remember all the missionaries are going through difficulties. Amen. All of our missionaries, that God will keep them well. Amen. All right. Well, let's pray today and ask the Lord to have his will and way in the service this morning. Amen. 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 Let's remember all these folks that's uh, going through this thing. Amen. I see they're rolling out the vaccine this morning, getting ready to send it out. Hopefully it'll slow it down. Amen. I hope so. Praying that it will. Maybe to just eradicate it. That'd be a blessing, wouldn't it? But, uh, amen. I'm glad to see you here this morning. You glad to be here? Amen. amen. Pretty weak, but I'm glad you said amen anyway. Amen. But uh, thank God today's the day the Lord hath made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Another day the Lord's given us. We just ought to be thankful for every blessing that he gives us in our lives. Amen. Amen, Brother Dan. Before the trial was coming, I might have read about it. I saw a piece of they're getting paid for the doctors. We got a new doctor in Durham this week, and they could not find why what is wrong with her. And she's hurt so much in her bones and so much pain that they cannot find what's wrong with her. We're praying that the doctor that she's going to do now can give us some relief or something. And Tim. She got four ulcers or two doctors, but if they don't want to cause them, if they give her medication that, they're supposed to be doing better. But they don't know what caused the pain. Just remember, remember this request. Amen. I'm going to ask Brother Mike if he will come and pray for us this morning. Amen. Amen. I wish I would remember my cousin, too. His wife passed away uh, Monday from leukemia, not the coronavirus. And then uh, Brother Mitch Tillman uh, sent me a message that Tommy <coughs> Tillman passed away. He's one started Harbor Evangelism. He's the missionary we work with in Thailand. And uh, they've got works going on in Thailand, Mongolia. And uh, Mitch just needs some help right now, prayer help. So. Remember them, if you would, in your prayers as well. So, so let's pray. Our Father and our God, Lord, we love you this morning, and we thank you just for the privilege, God, to come into your house and to worship, Lord. God, we're so blessed, and yet we don't realize how blessed we are sometimes, Father. God, I just thank you for the privilege to be here. And, uh, Lord, I thank you for our freedoms that we have. And God, I pray this morning for all these requests, Father, that's been mentioned, and God, that you would just have your will and way in each and every one. God, you know the needs, you know the burdens upon each and every heart. But God, most of all, for that one that may be here lost and undone without you this morning, God, finger around their heart and show them their need of a Savior this morning. And Lord, help our preacher as he comes. God, I pray that you touch him and use him in an unusual way this morning, God, to speak to our hearts. And God, just draw us nearer to you. And Father, we'll thank you and praise you for everything you do for us, dear God. For us in the wonderful name of Jesus, we do pray and ask it. Amen. 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 All right, let's get a book of standard and turn to page 284. Page 284.
appreciate that this morning. I'm glad that we can come together to worship him and adore him. Amen. Hallelujah. What a blessing it is to be in the house of God. Amen. While uh, Brother Melvin's coming, he's got a recitation he's going to read this morning. While he's coming to do that, let me make mention of a couple of things. Of course, back tonight at 6 o'clock in the service, and then the Lord willing, on Wednesday night this week, we'll be having our bonfire service. Amen. I know there looks like they're calling maybe for some rain Wednesday. Um, so if it's raining, we'll just have our regular Wednesday night service. But if it's not raining, we'll have our bonfire service. And uh, so if you can, be with us Wednesday night, 730. And if it's raining, we don't get to have it Wednesday night. Maybe we can have it Sunday night, uh, next Sunday night. So hopefully we get it in. Amen. I always enjoy it and a good time of fellowship. And so uh, uh, just keep that in mind. Amen. All right. All right, I want to read this. This is uh, the little boy from the carpenter shop. He was born in a stable, his mother a virgin, raised in a carpenter shop. His people were slaves, his parents were poor, his friends were a lowly lot. His chances in life seemed so slim. Why? He's expected to be a slave. But the people in darkness saw light in him as hope for freedom he gave. All of the power in heaven and earth God has invested in him. He's to die on a cross, descend into hell, meet the devil, and take the keys from him. He yielded his life to a death on the cross, cried, it's finished, and then he died. In the regions of hell, the devil celebrated. We've destroyed the king, he cried. In the midst of the celebration, footsteps were heard, walking the corridors of hell. Then the shouting stopped when a voice rang out, a voice as clear as a bell. Satan trembled as he recognized him who had come to deliver his own. Oh, shut and lock the gates, he cried. Don't let him ascend to his throne. Then the gates swung shut in the face of our Lord to prove God's salvation untrue. But he shook hell's gates and he cried, lift up your head, the king is coming through. Then out of the devil's prison house came a procession led by our king, crying out, oh grave, where is thy victory? And death, where is thy sting? Who is the king of glory? the Lord God Almighty, that is he. Who is the king of glory? He's the master of the host of heaven supreme. Who is the king of glory? He's the one that not even death could stop. He is the king of glory, the little boy from the carpenter shop. Who is the king of glory? He's the one that not even death could stop. He is the king of glory, the little boy from the carpenter shop. Amen. Amen. I'm glad death couldn't stop him. Hallelujah. Amen. The devil tried, but I'm glad, praise God, greater. He's the greatest on earth and the greatest in heaven. Amen. And uh, nobody, praise God, can overpower him. And I'm glad I'm on his side and he's on my side. Amen. All right, we're going to get Spring to come. She's going to sing one for us this morning. Well, all of them are coming. I, they changed the program on Amen. All right. While walking down memory lane, not so long ago, old oh, Satan came right by my side, making me feel low. He brought up thoughts of hurt and pain. When I had gone astray, he wanted to discourage me. I walked along my way. He said, You're undeserving, cause I know where you've been. I have a record of your life when you were bound by sin. I know your darkest. 
his secrets like the ones you'd never tell. Oh, what makes you think you don't deserve a place with me in hell? Well, I heard the old accuser, and this was my reply. You're right for all those things I've done. I sure deserve to die. My righteousness is filthy rags, and my goodness is unclean. Oh, but there's one thing that I can say to what you've said to me. It's under the blood. Oh, praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life's been changed. I'm not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gold. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Victory was given me. I was born again. He washed my pain and my guilty past. He put new life within. And no longer do I bear the marks that sin had brought my way. With happiness and peace of mind, praise God, I now can say it's under the blood. Oh, oh praise his dear name. I'm not what I used to be. My life's been changed. I'm not shackled by sin and shame. It's already gone. I'm happy reminding him it's under the blood. Oh, what can Amen. Appreciate that this morning. Amen. I'm glad I know where my sins are. They're under the blood. Amen. If you have your Bible this morning, turn to the book of Luke, chapter number one. Luke, chapter number one. I want to read a few verses here this morning. And while you're turning to Luke, chapter one, I want to again say it's so good to see all of you here in the building this morning. Thank those that are watching, those that are listening. We certainly appreciate you tuning our way this morning and trust that God has already touched your heart and ask that the Lord will help us just for a few moments today as we magnify the word of the Lord and give glory to the Lord, amen, this morning. In Luke chapter number 1, I want to begin reading in verse number 26. And the Bible says in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And the angel came in unto her and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee, blessed art thou among women. And when she saw him, she was troubled at his saying, and cast in her mind what manner of salutation this should be. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. 
And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb, and bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give unto him the throne of his father David. And he shall reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there shall be no end. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold, thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is the sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God nothing shall be impossible. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. And Mary arose in those days and went into the hill country with haste into the city of Judah and entered into the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? For lo, as soon as the voice of thy salutation sounded in mine ears, the babe leaped in the, my womb for joy. And blessed is she that believe, for there shall be a performance of those things which were told her from the Lord. And Mary said, My soul doth magnify the Lord, and my spirit hath rejoiced in God my Savior. For he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaiden. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done in me great things, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He hath put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He hath filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he hath sent away empty. He hath opened his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. And Mary abode with her about three months and return to her own house. Our Heavenly Father, we're thankful this morning for the privilege, Lord, that we have to gather here in the house of the Lord. I thank you, Father, for each and every one, Lord, that has made their way here today. Thank you, God, for those who are listening this morning, asking you, Lord, God, to touch all of our hearts, all of our lives, God, whatever the need may be. Lord, there may be someone that needs to be saved, Lord, I pray that today will be the day of their salvation. I pray, God, that you would encourage your children. Lord, that you would revive the Spirit of God in our midst. Oh, God, that you would stir us, my Father. Lord, we need your touch to be able, Lord, to preach your word. I pray you'd fill us with the Spirit. Oh, may the Holy Ghost have his will, his way here this morning in our hearts. God, have your way now. We'll thank you. For all that you do, for we ask it in Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach this morning from the verses that we have read here in Luke chapter number 1. And of course, this is a very familiar scriptures to most of us today. But I want to preach on this thought. The Christmas story is the story of joy. I believe there's anything that needs to be restored in this day that is the joy of the Lord. Amen. 
Nehemiah said, the joy of the Lord is my strength. And I'm glad this morning that we can find joy in the Lord Jesus Christ. I was reading in 1719, the great hymn writer Isaac Watts published a work called The Psalms of David, imitated in the language of the New Testament. And included in the work, there was a piece that based, was based on Psalm 98. As William Reynolds wrote, he says, while the initial stanza announces that the Lord is come, it is the only stanza that is related to Christmas and the birth of Jesus. The other stanzas could easily be appropriate at any season of the year. There is no mention of Mary, no mention of Joseph, no mention of the shepherd, no mention of the manger or the wise men, but yet who would deny this hymn a choice place among the traditional Christmas carols? Reynolds goes on to mention the exuberant joy that permeates the psalm. And no wonder for it's entitled Joy to the World. A New England music educator named Loswell Mason published a tune in 1839 that has become indebtedly associated with these words, but Isaac Watts' original words have a message that transcends the music. And of course, you and I know the song, Joy to the World. The Lord is come. Let earth receive her king. Let every heart prepare him room and heaven and nature sing. Joy to the earth, the Savior reigns. Let men their songs employ while fields and floods, rocks, hills, and plains repeat the sounding joy. No more let sins and sorrows grow, nor thorns infest the ground. He comes to make his blessings flow far as the curse is found. He rules the world with truth and grace and makes the nations prove the glories of his righteousness and wonders of his love. I'm glad that we can think about the Lord at this time of year and it should produce joy, amen, in the hearts of God's people. There's no more joyous occasion than the announcement of the birth of a child. Amen. I won't ever forget when our children were born, it was an exciting time for us to be able to tell everybody, hey, we, we just had a child. Amen. And here we find at this time of year there was no greater child ever born. Praise God then, the Lord Jesus Christ. And that should give all of us joy when we think about the Lord Jesus coming to this world to give his life that we could have life and life everlasting through him. Amen. And I'm glad as Jesus was born that this was not just any ordinary birth, but I'm glad this was God in the flesh. Amen. This was Emmanuel. God has come to earth. Amen. I'm glad that God has come to redeem all of mankind in the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. No wonder the angel says, I give you good tidings of great joy which shall be to all people because the Savior has been born. Amen. Every year the Christmas story is repeated. I never tire of hearing about the story of Jesus. I never tire of hearing about the birth of our Savior. Praise God. And all the miraculous events that took place, even surrounding his birth and the miracle of the birth of Christ itself. Amen. But I want you to notice some things this morning just for a few moments about the birth of of Jesus and the joy of Christmas. First of all, as we read in these verses, we see that there is an announcement in the story. Here we find, first of all, there was a messenger, and this messenger was an angelic messenger. 
God. The Bible tells us in Hebrews chapter number 12, or Hebrews chapter 1, verses 1 and 2 says, God, who at sundry times and in divers manners spake in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, hath in these last days spoken unto us by his Son. But every once in a while, God would speak to people by a visitor from heaven, amen, and it was an angel of the Lord. Here we find that he used an angel to communicate a specific word to some member of humanity. I'm glad God has the authority to do whatever he chooses to do. If he wants to send an angel to the Lord to deliver a message, he can do that, amen, and that's exactly what he did on this occasion. He sent the angel Gabriel, praise God, from heaven to deliver a personal message to an individual. Amen. I don't know about y'all. I don't know that I've ever seen an angel that I know of. Now, I know the Bible says that some have entertained angels unaware. Amen. Now, as far as I know, I've never had one to walk up to me and tell me that they were an angel from the Lord. But here we find there was an angelic messenger that came directly from heaven, thank God to earth, to thank God Mary, amen, and delivered her a personal message. Gabriel was his name, amen. You can look at it there in verse number 26. And in the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent from God unto a city of Galilee. Galilee named Nazareth to a virgin uh, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph uh, of the house of David and the virgin's name uh, was Mary. Uh, I mean everything was specific. Uh, God uh, sent Gabriel, amen, uh, and God sent him to a specific place uh, to a specific person. Uh, here we find an angelic messenger. Uh, but then not only we see an angelic messenger, uh, but we see an account accomplished messenger. He brought the message, amen. And oh, what a message that he brought to that young girl that day, amen. I'm telling you, praise God. And this wasn't his first assignment. This wasn't the first time that Gabriel ever been on the scene. If you go to the book of Daniel, chapter 8 and chapter number 9, it was Gabriel that gave the vision, gave the interpretation of the vision to Daniel. Hey, I'm glad this morning God is able to do things that we can't even recognize or even comprehend. And God, if it need be, can send an angel, amen, to deliver a message. Hallelujah. And I'm glad he was an um, angelic messenger. He was an accomplished messenger. And then he was an admiring messenger. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 1, and verse number 12, that the angels desire to look into the things that God has done in man's life, amen? I mean, the angels desire to see the things that God is doing. But not only was there a messenger, but then there was a message. It was a message of consolation. A messenger is not a messenger without a message. And Gabriel's message to Mary first involved a word of consolation, amen? Now, the angel said to her first thing, fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God, amen? He was a message of consolation. I don't know about y'all, but I believe if an angel showed up, I might be a little troubled, amen? I'm troubled when some folks show up and ain't an angel, say amen right there. But I'm telling you, he, he said, fear not, Mary, amen, for thou hast found favor with God. Not only a message of consolation, but it was a message of conception. The messenger went on to tell Mary, behold, thou shalt conceive, amen, in thy womb and bring forth a son and shalt call his name Jesus. It was a message of conception. Then we see the miracle of it, amen? And of course, I'm thankful that I do believe in this miraculous event that took place. Now, if you don't believe this, you're going to have problems. 
If you can't believe the virgin birth, you can't believe in the vicarious death. Amen. Because without the virgin birth, he could not have been the Savior. But it is important that we nail it down, that we believe it with all of our hearts, that Mary was a virgin and she conceived, amen. This is a message of conception. There's the miracle of it, amen. Oh, listen, that she would conceive in her womb and bring forth a son and she would call his name Jesus, amen. The miracle of it and then the mandate of it. Now the mandate was from the words of Gabriel. You will call his name Jesus. Amen. Now I don't know what you did when you found out that your wife was expecting. Or what your wife did when she found out she was expecting. Maybe that you got to looking in the baby books. Nowadays I guess you search it online. But back in the day you had a book with names in it. Now, when me and Deb got married, but even before we got married, she told me, she said, now, if we ever have a little girl, I'm going to name her Ocean. That was already settled as far as she was concerned, but, hey, I didn't care. All I want to do is marry that woman, amen? I don't worry about no youngers. I wasn't planning to have no youngers, and now look at it. But anyhow, so she had already named, but then after the others started coming, she uh, she come up with the other names. I'm sure you probably had a reason why you named your kids what you did. But here she had no choice. The mandate was you shall call his name Jesus. Oh, there's no greater name than the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Why would he be called Jesus? The name Jesus is the same or equivalent to the Old Testament name of Joshua. And the meaning of that name is Jehovah is salvation. And can I say this morning uh, that salvation was, is, and all about Jesus, amen? And without Jesus, there is uh, no salvation. Uh, what greater name could you give the Savior of the world uh, than the name Jesus? That means Jehovah is salvation, uh, for he is our salvation. Uh, without him, there is no salvation. Uh, he is the Savior, not a Savior, but the the one and only Savior of the world. His name shall be called Jesus, the message of conception, a message of consolation, and then it's a message of confirmation. Gabriel goes a step further and gives her a word of confirmation, trying to encourage her to accept what she has just been told after that he clarified that the conception would be of the Holy Ghost. As if to give Mary further proof, he goes on and says, your cousin Elizabeth is also expecting a son. As a matter of fact, this is the sixth month with her. Amen. And he says he, she was old. Amen. She was past childbearing years as far as we can see from the scriptures. In other words, they, were, they figured there was no hope that Elizabeth would have a child. But then he goes on to say, with God, nothing is impossible. Amen. And he's just confirming it to Mary. If God can do that for Elizabeth, God can do what he said he's going to do for you. Amen. And aren't you glad that he did? Amen. He did that, praise God. If God can give conception to a barren, void womb, he can give conception by the Holy Ghost to a virgin womb, amen? And because the Son is given, he can bring life, thank God, to an empty heart. And if your heart is empty and void of the Lord Jesus Christ, I'm glad this morning he can move in. Thank God and give you life and life everlasting. So we can see this is a story of joy. There's the announcement in this story. Then secondly, there is the amazement in this story. Now, the Bible said there in verse 29, and when she saw him, talking about the angel, she was troubled at his saying and cast in her mind what manner 
of salutation this should be. Notice the amazed recipient. Verse number 27, we see that it's to a virgin, espoused to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David, and the virgin's name was Mary. And can I just go ahead and insert this right here? That word virgin is important in our Bible. There are other perversions that are being put out that have removed the word virgin. Yeah, man, they just call her a young woman. Hey, my God, I say there could be a big difference between a young woman and a virgin. And the Bible specifically points out she was a virgin. She was pure. Hallelujah. That is important as well. Notice she was amazed at what she heard. We should consider Mary's purity. Amen. As I've already mentioned, she was pure. Praise God. We can see her purity. She has lived a clean life. No gross immorality or sin in her life. I'm glad they're sporting God. And God will only use a clean life. A life that has been saved, redeemed, washed in the blood of the Lamb. A life set apart, amen. How you ought to live clean in your life. You live clean, God can use you. Oh, listen, we see her purity. Then we see her promise. Amen. The promise says that she was espoused to a man whose name was Joseph. Now, she, had just, she has been given not just a proposal, but a promise of marriage. Amen. You see, the espousal period was a little stronger than our modern day of what we call an engagement period. Uh, the espousal involved a time, uh, uh, a period of about a year in which there was commitment and preparation uh, and purification uh, prior for their cohabitation. And Mary and Joseph had not lived together in the same household, and they had never shared the intimacy of marriage. And by the time that Jesus is born, there is both a mother and a stepfather, and both of them are called the parents, amen, of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, can I say that Mary was promised to Joseph, and she wanted to keep her commitment to Joseph. I'm glad and all of this was of the Holy Ghost, amen, because of her purity. Then we should consider Mary's parentage. In chapter 3, verse 23, the Bible said Jesus himself began to be about 30 years of age, being as was supposed the son of Joseph, which was the son of Heli. I want you to know people thought he was supposed to be the son of Joseph. But he was not Joseph's son. <laughs> Joseph had nothing to do with him getting here. Amen? Oh, listen. If you go to the book of Matthew and you run the genealogy of Joseph and of Mary, and when you look at the genealogy of, of Joseph, we can see that Joseph goes all the way back to Abraham. Amen? But then when you look at Mary's lineage, <laughs> Her lineage goes all the way back to Adam that says that Adam was the son of God. <laughs> Amen. Can I tell you this morning who Jesus' father was? God Almighty. Amen. He was conceived of the Holy Ghost. Therefore, that holy thing which be born of thee shall be called the son of God. Amen. Hallelujah. I believe all of this. Notice the amazed recipient. Secondly, notice the amazed response. Now, there was, she's a worried response of her humanity. Mary said in verses 34 and 35, she said, how shall this be? Mary was no ignoramus. She knew for a child to be born, there had to be an intimacy between a man and a woman. You and I understand that. Amen? And she said, well, how is this going to be 
seeing I know not a man. Amen. This is her own confession. And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. Amen. Notice her concern. Gabriel has revealed to Mary all of these details about the greatness and the identity of the soon coming son and in this annunciation, in this announcement. And her response is, how is this going to happen? How is this going to be? It's, not, it's just never going to happen because I've never known a man. Amen? But notice the clarification. The angel said he will be a child of the Holy Ghost. Amen. He will be a child of holy goodness. I'm glad he's holy. Amen. He explains to her that the Holy Ghost is going to come upon you. And the power of the highest is going to overshadow you. Thank God I believe that, don't you? And somehow or another God implanted a seed within that virgin womb. Thank God nine months later Jesus was born the Son of God. There's the word response of her humanity, then there's the willing response of her humanity. Verse number 38, Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. Thank God Mary said, Whatever God wants, I'm here. <laughs> oh, can you imagine? Maybe she hadn't thought of all the things that she was getting ready to think about, about being uh, expecting out of uh, being espoused to a man, and, and all of a sudden she's going to come up expecting, and she might not have thought of it, but what she did know is she was trusting God, and if this was of God, she was just going to let God have his way. Hey, we should learn something this morning from that. We may not understand everything God does. We may not can figure it out. We may not be able to put it down on paper, but if God wants it done, we ought to just allow God to have his way in our lives. Amen. She just trusted God and his her willingness to respond in her humility. And there's the wonderful response of her heart. Well, think about this. She said, be it unto me according to thy word. Whatever God wants, I'm willing to follow God. Amen. Oh, what a blessing in this story, the joy of the Christmas story. There was an announcement in this story. There's an amazement in this story. And then thirdly, there is an aftermath in this story. Notice Mary's journey in the aftermath of this story. We see the peculiarity of her course. While she leaves and she goes in verse 39 and 40, the Bible says she arose in those days and went to the hill country, and she went uh, with haste to the city of Judah, and she went there to the house of Zacharias and saluted Elizabeth. <laughs> Praise God, business fix pick up now. So she goes to visit Elizabeth, her cousin. Zacharias was a high priest. Matter of fact, Zacharias was in the temple doing the duty of the high priest when the angel of angel Gabriel spoke to him and told him that her, his wife was going to have a son. And you're going to call his name John. Amen. And matter of fact, he didn't believe it. And the angel said, well, I'll tell you what, make a believer out of you. You're not going to be able to speak till the child's born. Well, wouldn't that be a blessing? <laughs> and when he come out of the temple after he performed his duties, he couldn't talk. He could just beckon with his hands. Amen. I know some of y'all talk, still use your hands. I do myself. But uh, so he comes out, and for nine months he can't speak a word. And finally the day comes, Elizabeth has the child. And they begin to say, what you going to call him? What you going to call him? And he called for a writing tablet, and he said, his name shall be called John. And as soon as he wrote her down, he could speak. Amen. Now she goes to visit Elizabeth. Elizabeth's six months along. 
And so Mary goes to see Elizabeth, and maybe she's going just to make sure that what she was told is true. And as soon as she gets to the house, she sees Elizabeth, amen, and we see the proof from her cousin. And so she gets there. In verse 41, it came to pass when Elizabeth heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Now, I don't understand all this, but I believe it. I know one thing. She had a baby in her womb, and when she heard Mary, the mother of our Savior, speak, the Bible said the babe in her leaped. John doesn't start having a spell before he ever got here. Can you imagine what the ultrasound would have been like if they had that technology back in that day? Praise God. Amen. But I don't know, but the Bible said when she heard the salutation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. And she spake out with a loud voice and said, Blessed art thou. Among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. Amen. Oh, aren't you glad this morning? <laughs> There's nothing but joy when you know the Lord Jesus Christ. And here just knowing and hearing the, the words from Mary to Elizabeth, it, it brought the babe joy, and it filled Elizabeth with the Holy Ghost. Hey, I'm telling this morning, if there's any joy, it ought to be us this morning. If you want to be joyful, you've got every reason to be joyful. You have the Son of God living in you. Hallelujah, the Holy Ghost is in you. I'm glad we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise under the day of redemption and when we hear about Jesus, uh, it ought to cause us to have some excitement uh, in our souls, amen, this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Yeah. I'm sure that's probably the way John felt about it. No, the Bible said he leaped. Amen. I don't know how a baby leaps in the womb, but he leaped. The Bible said he leaped. Amen. Then we see the praise of the unborn child. Look at verse 41, if you will. Look at it right quick. And it came to pass that when Elizabeth heard the citation of Mary, the babe leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Ghost, and she spake out with a loud voice, said, Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb. And whence is this to me, that the mother of my Lord should come to me? Amen. There we see the praise of the unborn child. Oh, listen, friend. No greater joy than knowing Jesus as your Savior. And then we see, we can notice Mary's joy in the aftermath of this story. The annunciation given by Gabriel to Mary might be called a message of joy to the woman. When John the Baptist leaped inside his mother's womb, we're confronted with the joy in the womb. In Luke chapter 1, verses 46 through 30, uh, 40, uh, 55, we see Mary breaking into a word of praise. We might hear her song called Joy to the World. Amen. I'm glad, praise God, that she was excited about what the Lord was doing. She was excited about what God was getting ready to do. He was going to bring his son into the world through her. And hallelujah, she was excited that God was doing something. Amen in her. Oh, listen, she expresses joy for God's consideration of her. She said in verse 48 and 49, for he hath regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, from henceforth all generations shall call me blessed. For he that is mighty hath done to me great things, and holy is his name. I can just hear praise in her voice as she's praising God for what God is doing in her life. Hey, listen, friend, I don't care how long you've been saved. There still ought to be a song of praise unto God for what he has done and what he is doing and thank God for what he is yet to do in our lives. Can I remind us this morning, the best is still awaiting us. The best is yet to come. Thank God we get all this in heaven too. Amen. I don't know about y'all this this morning, but that excites me. Praise God. 
joy to the world. She expresses joy for God's consideration of her. Where was you when God came on, on your life? Lost and undone. But the Holy Ghost searched you out. Yeah, man. I like the song the choir sings, He came looking for me. I wasn't looking for him, but I'm glad he came looking for me. I'm glad he came. The Bible said he said himself, I've come to seek and to save that which was lost. I'm glad he came looking for you. I'm glad he found you where you was. I'm glad you got saved when you did. That ought to be a reason to rejoice this morning. The Lord of glory dwells within you. And one day we will go to be with him and live with him forever and ever and ever. Praise God in a land that is fairer than day, a land where there'll be no more sickness and sorrow no more death. Thank God, no more pain. Hallelujah. I'm filled with joy this morning, knowing the Savior. Hallelujah. Amen. She expresses joy for God's consideration of her. She expresses joy for God's control over humanity. Amen. Notice what the Bible says. She said his mercy is on them. Verse 50, his mercy is on them that fear him from generation to generation. He has showed strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their seats and exalted them of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich hath he sent away empty. He hath hope in his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spake to our fathers, to Abraham and to his seed forever. Aren't you glad God's in control of everything? And Mary realizes that and she expresses joy in God's control over humanity. And then God, she expresses her joy for God's compassion and for his help. She said in verse 54, he hath hopen his servant Israel. Well, I'm glad if you need help, I know who can help you. Yeah, man, that is the Lord. Amen, he hath Open them. As we close this morning, even as Gabriel's announcement to Mary is often called the Annunciation, Mary's words of praise in these final portions of Scripture are called the Magnificent. These events and these passages could be called by these names rightly, but I believe it's all saying to us this morning, joy to the world. The Lord has come. <laughs> He's on the way. Amen. We see all of this in Luke chapter 1 and then chapter 2. We find that her time has come. Thank God the day has come when the Lord will be born. And what announcement was made then as well. Hallelujah. Joy this morning is in knowing Jesus. We started out talking about joy with that song, Joy to the World. In 1907, a man by the name of Henry Van Dyke, he wrote a song, and this is what his song said. Joyful, joyful, we adore thee. God of glory, Lord of love, hearts unfold like flowers before thee, opening to the sun above. Melt the clouds of sin and sadness. Drive the dark of doubt away. Giver of immortal gladness. Fill us with the light of day. All thy works with joy surround thee. Earth and heaven reflect thy rays. Stars and angels sing around thee. Center of unbroken praise. Field and forest, vale and mountain, flowery meadow, flashing sea. Singing bird and flowering fountain, call us to rejoice in thee. Thou art giving and forgiving, ever blessing, ever blessed. Wellspring of the joy of living, ocean depth of happy rest. Thou our Father, Christ, our brother, all who live in love are thine. Teach us how to love each other, lift us to the joy divine. Mortals, join the happy chorus which the morning stars began. Father, love is reigning o'er us. Brother, love binds us to man. Ever singing, march we onward, victors in the midst of strife. 
Joyful music leads us sunward in the triumph song of life. I don't know about y'all this morning, but Jesus should bring joy and has brought joy. There's no greater joy than knowing Jesus. Everything about the Lord is, should be joyful in our lives. I know there were some hard days in his life, but yet his ultimate joy was to go to the cross. The Bible even says, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross. Amen? Why? Because of joy. Hey, listen, I know we've been living in some dark days the last nine months, but I'm glad we can still have joy. <laughs> Praise God, we can still have joy. In the midst of confusion, in the midst of troubles and heartaches and, and disappointments and, and all these things that are going on, thank God joy should reign supreme because we know Jesus as our Savior. Joy to the world. The Lord is come. And if you don't know Jesus, you'll never understand what joy is. But when you get saved, you'll know and experience the joy of the Lord, and it is our strength. Father, I thank you this morning for the precious word of God. Thank you, Lord, for giving us the story of Jesus. Thank you, God, for allowing us to understand the truth surrounding the birth of our Savior. Lord, we believe it with all of our heart. Lord, we believe every word that's in this book concerning our Lord and his birth. Oh, God, we believe every word in this book when it speaks to us of anything. God, I pray this morning that you would speak to hearts. Oh, God, may we magnify the Lord Jesus where our joy lies is in knowing him. Oh, God, may you speak to every heart today in this building. Oh, may you restore unto us the joy of our salvation. God, may you give joy to those who've never experienced the Lord. May the day be the day that they will trust Christ and be saved. God, move in our midst. Touch every heart in this building. Those who have been listening and watching, God, do the work in their hearts. And we'll thank you. We'll praise you, Father, for all that you do. For we ask in Jesus' precious name, amen. 279, we're going to st stand and sing joy to the world. Amen. Praise God. If you're saved, there ought to be some joy in your heart this morning that you know him. Let's sing out with all of our heart today. Let that joy be expressed as we sing and we sing as unto the Lord this morning. Amen. You need to do business. Come on. sing and heaven and nature sing and heaven and heaven on the second verse sing out this morning Sounding joy, repeat, repeat the sounding. Our Heavenly Father, thank you for this day. Lord, what a joy that it has been to be in the house of God. What a joy that it has been, oh God, to go back again and read of the Christmas story of joy in the announcement to Mary of the birth of the Lord Jesus Christ. What a joy, Father, that it is to see all these in the house of God. What a joy that it is, Lord, knowing that heaven is going to be our home forever. What a joy that it is to know that we never live a moment without the presence of the Lord. God, I'm thankful for the joy that is surrounding us because of our salvation. 
through the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless your people. Oh, God, may we be people of great joy for what you've done for us. And, Father, we'll give you praise and we'll give you glory and we'll rejoice in it because of Jesus. In his name we pray. Amen. Amen. Certainly appreciate you being here this morning. Thank you.